Hello, thanks for joining us from our studios in Tel Aviv. Coming up in today's newscast, a far-left activist in Israel is in big trouble. Exits for Israeli high-tech firms hit a record high, and southern Israel receives some beautiful visitors in the sky. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with the latest news in Israel. Police detained the left-wing activist Ezra Nawi at Ben Gurion Airport last night. Nawi has been at the center of controversy following the broadcast of a TV documentary where he claims to help the Palestinian Authority locate and kill Arabs who sell their land to Jews. Nawi is a member of the radical Taayush group and he's now being investigated for conspiracy to commit a crime. In an investigative Israeli TV program, now he has heard speaking about four Palestinian real estate agents who tried to sell him Palestinian land. He says he gave their pictures and phone numbers to the Palestinian Authority, even though he knows the PA will catch and kill them. According to the TV program, an activist from the human rights group at Salem helped Nawi set up the sting. The footage was secretly recorded by right-wing activists. Yesterday, police reportedly followed Nawi to the airport and detained him when he tried to check in for a flight. The Palestinian journalist Mohammed al kik is reportedly in critical condition after hunger striking for over a month. The reporter has been on a 48-day hunger strike protesting his arrest by Israel. He's being held in administrative detention on suspicion of Hamas-linked terror activity. al kik is being monitored in an Israeli hospital but there's no official comment on his condition. The 33-year-old works as a reporter for the Saudi channel Al-Majad and also appears as an analyst on Hamas-affiliated stations. Yael Cohen Paran is an Israeli environmentalist and politician, and she is a new member of the Knesset for the Zionist Union. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. So Israel is a small country, and sustainability and the environment are essential to its success and growth. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the government is doing enough to address environmental concerns in the country right now. Would you say that's true? Well, I would say uh, that's unfortunately not just right now. It's uh, even worse right now, I can say, because the things, uh, if you don't take care of environmental issues, they get worse. But I think it's, uh, it's been uh, for quite some decades like this, and uh, the environmental issues here has always been seen as sided to, you know, other issues that are the conflict and wars and, of course, very urgent uh, issues that are putting uh, other issues uh, aside. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the people in Haifa that live uh, just next to the refineries and are suffering for dev from devastating uh, air pollution for years and are sick and their children are sick and their health issues are really concerning them right now, their lives. Uh, and I think this is, uh, you know, very unfortunate and these issues should not and should definitely not stay on the side of, of the agenda. So talking about that pollution in Haifa, um, you know, there's been a lot of concern about the, the effect that that's going to have on children living within the area. What is the government doing right now to deal with the pollution? Well, right now there are several issues that are being dealt with uh, in like kind of uh, contradicting uh, trends. Uh, on one side, the Environmental Protection uh, Ministry is trying to put in force to enforce some measures and uh, put some uh, uh, more fa more uh, money and uh, more budget into uh, taking care of the pollution. But uh, I can tell you, it's uh, too little and uh, not enough to really take care of the serious pollution that is uh, being going on there for years. On the other hand, there are a lot of uh, uh, plans to develop more and to extend the refineries, to extend other uh, polluting plants. And uh, unfortunately, we don't see the government uh, stopping them. Uh, on the contrary, they are uh, promoting those development uh, plans. So speaking of recent uh, moves by the Israeli government, the Israeli prime minister approved a natural gas deal uh, not too long ago to allow Americans and Israeli gas companies to actually develop Israel's offshore gas fields. This move came amid a lot of criticism, especially from your party. What, what do you think about this decision? Why did they make this decision despite that criticism? Well, I think this decision about the gas uh, deal with the gas uh, monopoly is, uh, is very bad for Israel. Uh, we, as the Zionist Union, and uh, myself, even before I joined uh, the Knesset, uh, were protesting against it and uh, campaigning against it. I think uh, the, the 
the biggest problem is the monopoly, is that the Israel created the monopoly and this gas deal is ensuring there will remain a monopoly and this is not good for any economy and especially a very very small economy like Israel and they control the prices, they control all the decisions that are dealt with. We need this gas, we need this gas for Israel, we need this gas to come as quick as possible. On this I'm not a, you know, I'm not in a conflict with the decision with, with the government but I really disagree with the way they are dealing with it and the gas deal is really making sure that the interest of the monopoly will remain the most. Uh, th this is the interest that they are taking into account, and not Israel's, and not the public of, and, the, and the Israeli public. You also mentioned beforehand um, about the issue of building near beaches and, and that also contributing to environmental concerns. What are the implications of this? We see a lot of big high rises now that are being built, uh, you know, alongside the coast. Well, they are, uh, according to the uh, law in Israel, they are not so close to the, to the coast, not uh, according, uh, the, the plans are uh, limiting them from a, a, a more than 300 meters. No building will be uh, built between 100 meters to 300 meters unless it's for, it's for uh, tourism. So this is being kept and uh, right now I don't know if any high rise is really on the coast. This is definitely illegal, but uh, if you know something I don't, so I will definitely take care of that. Well, high rises probably isn't fair, but you know, I see a lot of nice buildings overlooking the sea, so it makes me wonder, you know. Yeah, well, look, Israel is really confronting a serious development stage because of the issue of a public uh, of the housing and the and the price of housing. So everywhere uh, looking into options of uh, building and developing. Right. I think this is a real threat and this should be a threat to the, you know, to open areas and it should really be dealt with uh, wisely and uh, uh, building outside the uh, uh, built area, outside the urban spaces should really be looked at very carefully and this is one very big fight we are dealing with right now, very big challenge. So on that note, in your view, what does Israel need to be doing the most to combat uh, environmental um, concerns and to improve sustainability? Well, there are many, many issues, of course. Uh, I think the main issue right now for Israel is the air pollution. Air pollution, we mentioned before in Haifa, we, we have it in other cities. It's based, based basically mostly from cars, from a, a, a polluting a power plants, from a industry, and this really should be taken very, very seriously into account because mo some of Israeli cities are the highest in pollution among all OECD cities, like Ashkelon and Haifa, and we see Tel Aviv. They are always ranked very high in the in the, between really hundreds and hundreds of Jerusalem cities. Jerusalem as well. Jerusalem as well. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do to, thank you to help improve much. the environment here. And thank you so much for coming. Thank in. you for inviting me. Thank you. A teenager in France has admitted to attacking a Jewish teacher to show his support for the Islamic State. An enseignant uh, de l'Institut Franco-Hébraïque La Source a été agressé dans le dos à l'aide d'une machette en raison de son appartenance religieuse clairement exprimée par le port d'un costume traditionnel et d'une kippa. Et ce, alors qu'il se rendait à son travail. Il s'agit à l'évidence d'une agression à caractère antisémite. A Marseille prosecutor identified the 15-year-old attacker as a Turkish citizen of Kurdish origin. The assailant lately injured a teacher from the Franco-Hebrew Institute after striking him in the back with a machete. After his arrest, the teenager told police that he carried out the attack because France dishonors Islam and protects Jews. Il a revendiqué avoir agi ainsi au nom d'Allah de l'État islamique, répétant avoir agi à plusieurs reprises au nom de Daesh. Car, dit-il, les musulmans de France déshonorent l'islam et l'armée française garde les juifs. It's been a great year for the startup nation. Israeli high-tech hit record numbers in 2015. There were a total of 104 exits during the year, and they were worth over $9 billion to the firms and their investors. It was a decade best for venture capital-backed exits, with the top three selling for over $500 million each. Topping the list was the international fintech company Funtech by D plus H, which was acquired for $1.25 billion. The acquisition of Valtech by Hardware followed at $929 million. 
These figures were issued Monday by the IVC Research Center. Mm -hmm. An Israeli startup is tackling back pain in a groundbreaking way. Ron Sacker is the CEO of Premia Spine and he joins us with more. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Natasha. So I see this very interesting model that you have right here. What does Premia Spine do? A Premia Spine has invented an alternative to spinal fusion. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with spinal fusion, uh, many times patients have debilitating back pain that requires a surgery that uh, ultimately leads to the bolting of two vertebral bodies together, eliminating motion. And we've basically identified an opportunity to invent an implant that recreates normal motion at the spine segment. So much like an artificial hip or an artificial knee, instead of bolting the vertebral bodies together and eliminating motion with the hope of eliminating pain, we actually allow the surgeon to remove the pain generators and put in an artificial joint. So much like, as I said, a knee replacement or a hip replacement, you can have an artificial joint in your back which would recreate all the normal motions that you do um, as part of your regular uh, daily activity, bending, um, uh, flexion, extension, all the normal activities can be recreated with this device. That's amazing. So what is the difference between the current method that exists right now to treat this issue versus what your company is offering? The traditional approach is to put in four pedicle screws similar to these types of screws that you see here. Mm -hmm. But instead of putting an artificial joint, you simply put two rods and that basically eliminates all motion in the, in the lumbar spine. When you eliminate that motion, you can create what's called adjacent level disease where the problem that existed at this level moves to the next level. And so after a number of years, you may find yourself coming back into the operating theater for another procedure. And our idea is to really treat the problem by recreating normal motion at that segment. So we have, as you can see here, uh, a joint that, uh, that moves. This is how your joint normally moves uh, when it's healthy. And simply when it's diseased, we allow the surgeon to remove this joint and replace it with an artificial joint. Wow, okay, so who, who suffers from this issue the most? Who are the main uh, people dealing with this? The, the, this problem is a degenerative disease. So from the ages of 50 and above, you start to have problems of spinal stenosis, of a slip disc. These are quite qu common problems. Uh, in the United States, you have upwards of 400,000 patients every year who undergo lumbar fusion wow. surgery. And the majority of them are coming in because of those types of diseases of the lumbar spine. So is, is this available now in the United States or where is your technology available in, right now in this given moment? So the technology is available unfortunately only in Europe and in Israel, uh, but we will be starting a U.S. clinical trial in 2016. The purpose of that trial is to prove the safety and efficacy of this device. Uh, patients who invo are involved in the study would be followed over a two-year period and ultimately we would apply for approval in the United States and the FDA hopefully would approve the technology and then it would be available commercially. Well, that's great. So Premier Spine is an Israeli company with technology pioneered by Israelis. Why did your startup decide to focus on this issue? Well, we were uh, very, very interested in solving problems in the orthopedic field. And we spoke with surgeons not only in Israel, but also in Europe and the United States and tried to identify where our knowledge and technology could be applied. We have a lot of uh, experience and knowledge in, uh, in joint arthroplasty. And we looked at hips and knees and ultimately we identified an underserved need in the lumbar spine and we decided to focus on this particular problem. We, we've been working on this particular technology for over a decade. We have patients who are already out to 11 years with this technology. Uh, so this is a, a very long project that we've been engaged in for, as I said, over a decade. And uh, we feel that we've come up with a solution that's really uh, game-changing and novel and will ultimately be the gold standard for decades going forward. Well, it looks like you're headed in the right direction, and uh, I'm excited to see when you guys uh, open up and, and start having uh, this, this technology available in the United States. We look forward to it as well. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Natasha. Israel's southern skies look a little different than usual. The air is filled with dark moving shapes that look like dancing clouds. But don't worry, it's not the end of the world. The breathtaking sight is really composed of migrating birds. It's winter time, and that means the starlings from Russia and Eastern Europe have arrived to spend a warmer winter in the Holy Land. They're swooping, pivoting, and soaring through Israeli skies, putting on a display that tops any aerobatics team. The starlings stick together to stay safe changing movements as a shifting collective to confuse potential predators. The result is magnificent. 
Their unique formations in the air sometimes appear like a falling leaf, a rising dove, or a giant whale swimming across the sky. Until about 20 years ago, the starlings descended in millions on the northern Negev. But in recent years, the numbers have declined to a few hundred thousand. It's time for our Hebrew word of the day. Tonight's word is possibly one of the most common used words in Israel, balagan. Balagan means a mess or chaos in Hebrew, and it can refer to both the mess in your room or the mess that is your life. If you hear an Israeli say, is a balagan, which means what a mess, they could be referring to either of those things. But don't get offended because most things are a balagan in Israel. The origin of the word balagan comes from the Persian word for attic. And over time, the word's use has expanded to include storage spaces and warehouses as well. Since these places are often in disarray, balagan has been known as the mess itself. On that note, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather forecast. Tomorrow is expected to be sunny with a high of 68. It's time to take out your umbrella again because there will be balagan on Thursday. It will be rainy in the afternoon with a high of 67. All right, everybody, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.93 shekels to the American dollar. Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV. And don't forget to check out our breaking newscast every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.